In this lecture, we learn how to analyze complex circuits. Complex circuits are circuits with two or more batteries. First, let's discuss the loop rule, also known as Kirchhoff's law, named after Vladimir Kirchhoff, a Russian who first described his rule, his law. The following is true. As you travel around any closed portion, closed loop, closed path in any circuit, the sum of the signed voltages you encounter is zero. There are two kinds of signed voltages. There's a signed voltage associated with a current carrying resistor, and a signed voltage associated with an EMF, a battery. We have the following. When you're traveling through a, re a current a carrying resistor against the current, against the current arrow, the sine voltage is a product of I times R with a positive sign. On the other hand, if you're traveling through the current carrying resistor with the current arrow in the same direction as the current arrow, the signed voltage there is a negative times the product of I and R. I've summarized that information here. If you're traveling through a battery and you travel in your imagination from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, the signed voltage there is a positive, whatever the EMF of the battery is. It's a positive of the battery voltage. But if you're traveling from positive to negative, from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, the sine voltage there is a negative of the battery EMF. Let's look at an example. A 12 volt battery, a 3 volt battery, and three different resistors. We wish to determine the currents in every one of these elements. We begin by picking any one of them, guessing what the direction of the current is, in that element and assign a symbol to it, an unknown quantity. Usually we start with X. I can pick any one of these elements, the battery there, that, this, that, and that. This problem is the same as the one that's shown in the notes. I will work it differently so you have two ways to look at this problem. I'll begin by taking the direction of the current in this 3-volt battery to be that way, and I'll assign the symbol name X to it. Now, the current through the 2-ohm resistor has no choice but to also be X, and I won't label the current direction through this. It will clutter up the diagram, but the current there is the same as whatever that current is. Now, let's give a name to the current through one of the other resistors. I'll assume that the current through that resistor is that way, and I'll call that unknown current Y. Now, let's look to see what the currents are in other portions of the circuit. Look at branch point E. You have two flows coming toward it, two currents, a Y and an X, and they join together at point E, like two streams coming together to form a larger stream. This larger stream consists of the sum of the two currents. So this current there is X plus Y. And now you will see that we've assigned to every element of this circuit a current symbol. X, X, Y, X plus Y. This also is X plus Y, because where else could this battery current go except that way? Well, we have two unknowns, X and Y. We need to make two equations involving those two unknowns. We can do that by picking a loop here 
and applying the loop rule and then pick a different loop and do the same thing. We'll have two equations involving two unknowns. I arbitrarily pick the loop A, B, E, F, A. A, B, E, F, A. Start at A, B, E, F, and back to A completes the loop. So I'll start counting from this point here. Remember the current through the 4 ohm resistor is this way, and it's X plus Y. So we have an IR voltage. We're going with the current arrow, so it's a negative I, but I is, symbolizes X plus Y, times R, which is 4. Now we go from B to E in the same direction as the Y current arrow. So it's with the arrow, so it's a negative I times R. It's a negative Y times 6. And that takes us to point E. Nothing is between point E and F. No harm done along that path. And finally, we travel from F to A through a battery, from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. If you go from negative to positive, it's a positive battery voltage, or in other words, plus 12. That equals zero. I'll simplify this equation a little bit. It's negative 4x minus 10y plus 12 equals 0. I'll solve this equation for y like this. It's 12 minus 4x all divided by 10. We'll use that equation together with a second equation to finish this problem. I'll choose now a second loop, a different loop. I'll choose B, C, D, E, B. It wouldn't matter, it wouldn't make any difference at all if I, choose, if I chose the big loop, A, B, C, D, E, F, A. In the final analysis, I'll end up calculating the same currents in our circuit. You might want to try choosing a different loop, not the one I'm going to choose, which is the loop B, C, D, E, and then B. Starting at B, from B to C, there's no element. From C to D, we travel through a battery from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. That's a negative 3 battery voltage. And then from D to E through the 2 ohm resistor, the current there is to our left. The X current through the battery has no place else to go but turn to our left. And so the current there is X, and we're traveling with that current arrow as we move around this loop. With the arrow, negative sign. So that's a negative. The current is X, and the resistor R is 2. Then we turn north and go against the grain, against the current Y arrow. Against is a positive I times R, so that's a positive Y times 6, and that takes us to point B, our starting point. The sum of those three is 0. Now, I'll rewrite this equation by substituting for Y. We've got a negative 3 minus 2X plus y, which is 12 minus 4x, 
all divided by 10, and we multiply times 6, and it's still equal to 0. I'll multiply every term by 10, and we have negative 30 minus 20x plus 12 minus 4x. All of this times 6 still equals 0. This is negative 30, negative 20x, plus 72, minus 24x, still equals 0. We have a negative 40x, negative 44x, plus 42, equals 0. x is equal to 42 divided by 44, and that's 0. Point nine five amperes. If you then take this expression for value for x and put it here, this is what you'll get. Zero point eight two amperes. So now we know the value of this current, that current, and since we know both x and y, we know this current as well. So we know the current everywhere in this circuit.